Wrestling for Milwaukee, and we're going to kind of tag team this breakout. Uh, this is the last breakout that you guys are going to have for the afternoon, so this is a, a bulk of the time will actually be spent in this breakout, and this is the tool control breakout. So this is really one of the key anchors of the one key system, and it's kind of an interesting background. This really started back in 2012. 2012 is when we launched the first M18 fuel impact driver. And there was a new feature on that tool, one that really hadn't been commercialized in the market at a great extent to that point. And it was an electronic drive control. So on the foot of that tool, you had the ability to select speed, speed and torque settings one, two, or three. And those settings were set from us, from the factory. And they were designed around some of the more common applications and in, in, uh, use cases for impact drivers. But what it really did was open up the eyes of a lot of our users. They said, you have the ability to control a tool and you can do it electronically. Give us the capability to do that. Give me the ability to set up the tool in the way that I want. Because I don't always use speed setting two, I need a speed setting two and a half. And if you take a look at what drilling and fasting means in terms of user solutions, it is extremely broad. Like we mentioned in the earlier presentation, there are literally millions of different things you can do with these tools. Think about what you'd use a number two Phillips bit for. It's, it's mind-numbing to think about all the, the different options that you have. It doesn't matter if, it, if we're talking about an HVAC installer who's literally driving hundreds or thousands of self-tapping screws a day, or a prefab facility who wants the, the highest repetition and constant torque applied to their, their fasteners, or if it's an electrician who has self-tapping screws, he has tap cons, and he has electrical uh, conduit clamps to install. Everyone needs a greater ability to control their tool, especially for the applications that they do often and very repetitively. And that's what we're here, here to show you guys. Um, for the first time ever, we have the ability to connect and fully control the tool, which is really, really exciting for us for a couple different reasons. One, gives you endless opportunities in terms of what you can actually use this tool for and how you can use it to, to get the best productivity. And a couple things we'd like you guys to keep in perspective. You're going to hear a lot about connected devices, both in this industry and, and outside of it. This is a connected device, but it's a lot more than just connecting your iPhone app to a tool. It has a cloud and web-based infrastructure that hopefully you guys have a different perspective than the, the first group that was here, but you saw the benefits of that cloud infrastructure and all that information that's coming around already. You saw what tool reporting means and what inventory management means. And we'll show you guys how you can leverage that infrastructure to help uh, uh, tool control as well. So what I'd like to do is, is kind of walk you guys through this app and this, this interface for the tool as much as possible before I hand it off to, to Cole. Um, and one thing to keep in perspective, we're doing this on an iPad because it's easier for my fat fingers to push and uh, it's easier to connect to a TV. This is something that's going to be available on any iOS or Droid device. And what we do here, the intention is that you set up the tool you want, either going into that job or that morning over lunch break, you put your phone in your pocket and you walk away. It's not reliant on the app being open or the phone being uh, close to the tool. So in the case of connecting the tool, it's a, it's a pretty streamlined process. I'm going to connect to this impact driver uh, right here. So all you have to do is pull up this interface on the app and you hit the pair button. You hit that pair button once. And one of the really cool things about our app infrastructure is it not only knows that this is an impact driver, not a drill, but it knows that it's my impact driver, not Cole's, not Jay's, no one else's. This is mine. And you can set it up and create it uniquely. So now we're basically in, call it the home screen of a product. And you've got the ability to control the tool, manage profiles, which Cole will walk you through. You can also identify the tool. Or if I hit the button, you guys can see either on the tool or on the screen up here, it lights up. It lights up, starts flashing you, so if you have multiple tools in front of you, you know what you're talking about. And you can also reset this tool back to the factory settings. You can do that both through the app as well as uh, on tool uh, by pushing the button. But if I go within tool controls, this is ultimate flexibility for this product. I'm going to try to tip this down for you guys to see. Uh, on this tool, we, we have four different modes, four different slots on this tool where you can save settings and setups for your applications. And you see on the top of the screen where it says mode one, two, three, four, that's where this happens. 
I can create a custom setting, a custom profile for this tool in each one of those settings and then quickly toggle between them as I go about my day. But what we're showing you guys now is basically ultimate flexibility. Ultimate flexibility. Right now, the tool is spinning at 2,088 RPM. If I am running a very small light duty application and want to adjust it to something around 500 RPM, that's all you've got to do. And adjust the tool seamlessly and instantaneously. And from here, you've also got the ability to enable torque control. So on, on an impact driver, I've got torque level zero through 10, where I can set it wherever I want, wherever I think it's necessary or best for that application. We'll do it repetitively, time after time, all the same. This is a good example of, again, ultimate flexibility of this product, but we see this going in so many different areas. If you think about the users who would, would leverage this technology and the applications that they're gonna do, we're gonna lead them closer to the water. And to show you guys a taste of what that looks like, I'm gonna show you guys a new setup that's called self-tapping screw. So self-tapping screws, one of the most popular things that anyone would ever use an impact driver for, and it gives you a completely different screen. So what I can do now is select the gauge. If I'm going through a 20 gauge, uh, 20 gauge steel with a one, eight, one inch number eight hex head fastener, that's all you've got to do. And it adjusts multiple settings within that tool. The tools are the smartest tools in the industry. And it knows when you break through that first piece of material and that second piece of material, and we want ultimate flexibility to keep from stripping that fastener, and you have it. This database that's transferring to the tool was built after months of research by Cole and, and some guys from the development team, but it's flexible. Everyone pushes differently, everyone has variables that no one else has, and you can tweak it. So again, this is really changing three different things about that application, if I want to tweak it, I can. And then once I find out, hey, this is the mode that I really like, I'm gonna save this uh, into speed uh, setting number two on the tool, and I'm gonna call it whatever I want. I'm gonna call it, uh, Christian screw, and it's done. Now whenever I come back to the tool and toggle into the second mode on the product, it's the screw that I set up and created myself. And Cole will show you where that library of modes that you save lives, but it lives. And now I can put that mode on any of the tools that I have uh, within my inventory. So I'm gonna disconnect from the impact and connect to the drill and just walk you guys through a couple different things on this tool. The drill is already not only a very broad tool, but a very flexible tool. There's a lot of effort into designing the best clutch on the market, 13 different settings on this clutch. There's a lot of effort to make sure that the speeds are where they should for optimal productivity, multiple speeds on the tool. There's a drilling mode, there's a fastening mode, there's a hammer mode. A lot of controls already, but we are able to provide so much more. So within the drill, again, this is a unique screen. This is a unique screen for this tool. And right now I'm in custom drill mode. There's a lot of applications where having a drill all on, all RPM, all torque and power is overkill. And actually it damages not only the bit, but the material, electrical panels. Driving hole saws into electrical panels, you'll burn the bit real quick. And we see a lot of guys try to compensate for that by feathering the trigger, or trying to, trying to hold the, the trigger, in, the speed of the tool, at a constant speed, but it's a variable trigger, it's hard to control. So what ends up happening is they put the more tenured, experienced guys on jobs like that, instead of jobs that require uh, termination or testing uh, some, of the, some of the installations on a job. But within this mode, I've got the ability, the 2000 RPM tool right now, if I want to lock it into 1540 RPM, it's that simple. Uh, you also have the ability to enable something called kickback control. I think. I think we've probably all experienced what happens when a drill kicks, right? When the, that bit bites and it's stuck, it kicks, and it kicks pretty hard. Now we have the ability to control where that kick happens. You can make it very sensitive. If you're up in a very tight application that you don't want anything, uh, uh, any reaction, you have the ability to set it all the way towards this tool is gonna be all on and, and, and act like a normal drill would. We also have the ability within the drive control part of this, when you're driving screws, not drilling holes, to adjust a lot of different things. Again, I mentioned there's 13 different clutch settings. Right now that spectrum of clutch settings is like this, with 13 different increments in between. I can take those clutch settings and adjust it wherever I want. So if I'm driving a lot of smaller fasteners that need more precision, I take the clutch settings down here, and now I still have 13 increments 
but they're much more granular. Or same on, on this end of the spectrum, or anywhere in between. And you've got the ability to uh, also set the speed that you're going to have in high speed, set it in low speed, and the tool will know which, which speed you put it in. So with that being said, I'm going to hand it off to Cole right now. He's going to give you guys some more tangible examples on how this would uh, uh, really change the everyday use of our, our users. And, and again, please ask questions if you guys have questions, and we'll get your hands on this stuff here in just a